Hi, everybody. Um, so I'm working on a project or worked on a project to, to test the different um, uh, AI detectors that are available uh, to see if it can identify what was written by a machine or what was written by a human. And um, I've, as you can see in this spreadsheet, um, I've uh, created a spreadsheet of the results of basically my testing. So I've tested basically 13 different um, AI content detectors. Um, and um, they don't all work equally well. And um, if you wanted to know right off the bat, which ones seem to have uh, done the best, you can see actually that Hive moderation here in the spreadsheet, it was able to detect um, all of the machine written documents as written by AI, which I thought was interesting because there was so much um, hype about GPT-0, which didn't actually uh, do as well. So if you just wanted to know that, which one of these 13 um, AI detectors works best, you can you can stop watching the video. Right now, it's Hive Moderation AI Text Detection. Um, and I will actually put the, um, the names and the websites for the different detectors in, in the notes below. Um, so you can click on them and, and, and um, try it out for yourself. Um, and why did I do that? I, I'm, I mean, I'm interested in knowing uh, if it actually works because there's been so much hype about uh, the possibilities of detecting machine written text. Do these detectors actually detect the text? It turns out they don't actually work that well, except for hive moderation. Um, let me show you what were, what were the uh, uh, text that I used for testing. So uh, in some of my other videos about um, uh, chat GPT, I've used a song by, uh, you know, a, a hip hop song about academic integrity in the voice of Drake. So I'm just reusing that uh, verse that it was already written by the machine. Um, I also have asked it to write a 750 word sonnet about nature in the voice of Margaret Atwood. So that's another uh, sample of text that I used to test the AI detectors. And then I used a poem written in the voice of Pablo Neruda, the Chilean poet. Um, and then I used a short commentary on the poem, right? So a commentary that would discuss the style and the poetic rhythm of the writing. Uh, and then uh, another uh, piece of text that I've used before, I asked it to write uh, a comment on the dangers of climate change. So there's that. Um, and then I later on asked it to rewrite that comment on climate change with more perplexity and burstiness as a way to try to see if it could uh, fool the AI detector. Um, and then uh, lastly, I asked it to, oh, not lastly, but second last, I asked it to write it with more nouns or change the different nouns and verbs. There's different techniques you can use, I think, to try to create more uh, human sounding writing. And this is a, a prompt that I saw another uh, user suggest in one of the comments to, uh, to one of the videos that I watched. Um, that commenter said, uh, you can you can ask it to rewrite your passage by changing 50% of nouns and verbs for similar ones and rewrite the verb usages to add natural sounding variations in complexity, but retain the same tense and overall meaning. So I asked it to do that. Uh, and then lastly, I put it into the thing that I think uh, many commentators have mentioned that you can put some of this text into spin bots or quill bots, basically uh, another form of AI rephrasing of your writing, right? To change in the in the in the attempt to either improve it or maybe to deceive detectors to try and change it. So that's what I did. So I, I have basically um, if we go back to the spreadsheet, you'll see that here's the 13 detection software or programs that are available online. And then there's the Drake song, the Margaret Atwood sonnet, 
the Neruda poem, the commentary in the Neruda poem, the climate change, uh, and then asking the machine to write more perplexity and burstiness and then changing verbs and nouns, and then lastly, changing it to Quilbot. Okay, so that's what I did, and I'll go over the results later, but as you can see, I've already said that the one that scored the best, and I've um, color-coded it, the, the one that scored the best was, uh, was Hive Moderation. It was able to uniformly and without any error identify all of the writing as AI, whereas the other ones are a mixed bag. So what are these websites? I'll show you the different websites very quickly. Uh, here's the one that's the most well-known because it was, uh, I guess it blew up in the news because it was written by an undergraduate student um, in an Ivy League university who's a computer science and journalist, journalism student, and he wrote it over the holidays, and he's since improved it. And so this is the improved version. So this is GPT-0. Uh, this is Hive Moderation, the one that actually did the best. Um, and this is a, a, one program as a part of a, a suite of other programs um, that it has. Uh, Writer is another AI content detector. Um, AI text classifier. This is the one that was actually written uh, very recently by OpenAI. So they put out a product to let users test if they could uh, detect um, chat GPT um, content. And this GPT-2 output detector demo, which was actually pre-GPT-3. So this was written some many months ago. And um, uh, you, you can find that uh, also on the OpenAI uh, website. Uh, AI detector, this was called content at scale. AI detector, I used that as well, tried that, tested that. I also tested AI cheat check, um, AI content detector. Uh, this one's called Kazan SEO um, detector, uh, AI GPT-3 detector. I also tested Corrector app, AI content detector. Um, and I also tested um, this thing called um, uh, de detector draft and goal, uh, another GPT-3 uh, content detector. Um, and then I also, and then I also tested it on cross prag, which is another AI detector. And then lastly, I used this thing called giant language model test room, which is something that was written by researchers at MIT, IBM, uh, and at Harvard. Um, and this is quite interesting. This one doesn't give you a score as much as it gives you a color coding and with histograms, uh, what the, if you will, possibilities of um, the predictability or, or the possibilities or the, the, um, the, the, the possibilities of certain words appearing. So in the green, if here is a, a passage that I pasted in earlier that I tested, the green shows you basically the top 10 words that would appear after the previous word. So of here would be the top 10 words that applies that would appear after the word implication and so on and so forth. So the green is the most common words that would appear after its previous word. And the yellow would be the top 100 words that would appear before uh, after uh, in, after the word that appears before it and then red is the is um uh, is um uh 100 and then the pink is is 1000 so you can see that there's le the pink of course is the most uncommon words to appear after uh, the previous word so in effect this teaches us a little bit about i might be getting ahead of myself but i think this teaches us a little bit about how those AI detectors actually operate, they are looking for what is predictable in terms of, or is what is likely to appear um, in a sequence of words. And that's all it's really doing. And that's what um, the, all of the, the, these detectors are operating on this um, premise. So, um, and then lastly, uh, I went to uh, use Quillbot, which is this rephraser. Um, and I'll show you that as well. What I didn't use was origin, Originality AI, which is actually a, another a paid program uh, for maybe for basically content providers, people who are writing content for blogs and websites. 
Um, and I've read that there's some good reviews about this, but since it was uh, something you have to pay for, I didn't I didn't use it. And I think the uh, results, after all, are a mixed bag, even with originality AI, even though it's it's supposed to be a good one. And then lastly, I just thought I'd show you this paper. This is called The Attention is All You Need, which is the original paper written in 2017, which, um, which proposed this idea of the transformer. Uh, so really, I just wanted to show you this in the sense that this whole idea of machine-written text really only came about in the last five years, right? In the sense that these Google researchers, plus this one Aidan Gomez at University of Toronto, uh, this one Toronto U, U of T um, researcher, oh, last sorry about that, <laughs> just had a a break there. Um, and yeah, so these researchers basically in two thousand and seventeen propose this notion of the transformer, which is of course what changes everything for us today. So let's go back to the spreadsheet. So I pasted in basically, what did I paste in? I, I pasted in um, uh, those uh, different um, passages that was written by ChatGPT. And you can see here basically that most of the um, programs, which are in green, the green is basically, basically um, the results of the programs on the left here not being able to identify the passages as machine written. If you can see here, for instance, for the Drake hip hop song, you can see most of these uh, programs from uh, GPT-0 all the way down to a giant language model testing room. Uh, they basically thought it was human, except for hive moderation and also detector D and G. So it's a mixed bag. But for the Margaret Atwood, again, only hive moderation thought it was uh, uh, ninety nine percent machine written. Everyone else thought it was um, written by a human. Uh, and similarly for uh, the the uh, Neruda poem, only hive moderation uh, was able to to sorry not only it, many of the programs sorry I'm re I'm misreading my columns. Uh, many of the programs were able to basically identify the Neruda poem and also the commentary on Neruda as AI, right? Uh, and for the climate change, it, most of them were fooled again, uh, except for um, hive moderation. And I think in this sense, um, the um, uh, which is a, a good um, a, a good result for GPT-0. GPT-0 was also able to identify the climate change uh, article as likely entirely AI. And I think maybe this, I would pause here for a second that I understand that GPT-0 was written to identify academic writing. So maybe it's better at identifying academic writing than it is at identifying creative writing. None of these programs are very good at identifying creative writing, poems or songs. Uh, not very good at that, um, but um, but maybe GPT-0 is better at academic writing. But when I then went to ask it to create more perplexity and burstiness, which is something that uh, GPT-0 looks for, it looks for levels of burstiness or perplexity, uh, when I actually went and asked GPT-0 to rewrite the passage with more perplexity and more burstiness, um, it's, it's still not clear, right, for GPT-0. It still was confused. Everyone else was still confused or, or deceived, except for Hive Moderation. It was able to identify um, the, uh, the request to write the passage with more perplexity and more burstiness as still machine written. And then I went one step further, which is the um, using the, uh, the prompt can you rewrite this and change 50% of the verbs and nouns, as I said, and uh, you know, uh, keep the, the tone of the writing, but, but change the nouns and the verbs. Um, it did decrease Hive Moderation's result, but it was still very good. It still thinks it's 66.6% .6 likely um, AI, whereas all of the other programs failed, right? They all were fooled in that sense. 
So I guess these last two columns are quite interesting in the sense that if you just ask it to write with more perplexity and more burstiness, you're likely to fool things except high moderation. And if you ask it to change the verbs and the nouns, again, automatically, you don't have to do anything. You just ask, you're just putting it in the prompt, make sure you use, you know, make sure you can, uh, please uh, change some of my nouns and verbs. Uh, it also can be very deceptive. And then lastly, what is interesting when I put it into the spin bot or the quill bot, um, it did, of course, decrease the, um, it, it finally, I guess, was able to fool hive moderation. So that was the last straw. Quillbot was able to fool hive moderation because it said it's 42.9% not likely to be AI, which it was, right? So uh, it can be, you can, I think, ultimately deceive uh, these programs. And you can see it is a quite a mixed bag um, with mostly the Neruda poems and the commentary on the Neruda poems as the only things that these programs could identify as written by a machine. Uh, most of this green is all of the program saying all of these things are real. And so they were, I thought in that sense, very easily fooled. Um, even the one that was in the news so much, GPT-0, uh, you can see if you look across, the Drake song is likely human, the Margaret Atwood song is likely human, the Neruda poem is likely human. Uh, the commentary on Neruda is likely entirely AI, so there it was right. Uh, and then the climate change, likely entirely AI. And then when I asked it to have more perplexity, it said includes parts written by AI. And then when I changed the verbs and the nouns, it said, oh, likely human. And then, um, well, oh, this is odd, when I put it into Quillbot, made even more changes, then actually it said, oh, may, then it's like, maybe it has AI. So I think what this demonstrates to me is that this technology is not very reliable, except for a hive moderation. They must have some special sauce in their coding that, um, that is able to identify um, a machine written text uh, in such a uh, successful way, you know, 99%, 99, 99, 99. It's only when I changed uh, the verbs, it went down to 66%. And then Quillbot was the ultimate uh, test, which um, the, the, and, and Quillbot is not the only rewriter. There is, there are many other rewriter programs online. I, I wasn't going to test them all, but um, so what, what's the takeaway from this? I think the takeaway is I'm not interested in using these, um, these AI detection programs to, you know, to go, aha, I caught you as an instructor, as a professor, but rather um, there might be a time, you know, there might be a, 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 a use for these programs and it would be good to know when you needed to use this program for whatever reasons, um, that hive moderation probably would be the best one to use, at least steering you in the right direction, because the other ones clearly steer you in the wrong direction. Um, but ultimately, I don't think I'll be using these programs because I do think it is ultimately a carceral response. It's a punitive response, and it's a, a kind of a surveillance monitoring response. Um, but nonetheless, it's good to know what's out there, what works, what doesn't work, and of course, which one is the best at doing um, what it purports to do. Okay, um, so thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.